down, please. Oh, yeah. All right, cut the music, cut the music. Yes, yes. The machine, yes. Don't worry, I didn't drive out here not to tell that story, okay, guys? <laughs> you think they gave me all these cameras and I won't bring that up? <laughs> Yeah, I am the machine. I'm also a father of two with high blood pressure. And possibly an inactive thyroid because my wife scheduled a fucking blood panel this week. She goes, I got you a blood panel. I thought we should know if something's wrong with you. I go, I'm shooting a special on Friday. Do you think maybe we could hold off? Well, don't you want to know? No, not this fucking week, no. I didn't even know men had thyroids. I'm being dead serious. Doctor's like, does your dad have a thyroid? And I was like, I don't think so. He's like, holy cow, are you serious? How about his dad? And I go, no, definitely not, yeah. <laughs> you should know something's wrong because you have children. Fuck that. You, I did not sign up for this responsibility to be a grown-up. I don't know if you guys feel the way I do, but just like, growing up sucks dick. I, like, kids? I got two kids. I got two kids. I got, uh, Georgia is 11, blonde hair, blue eyes, real smart, and uh, I got another one. I don't know if you guys got one of those kids that was just fucking mess, like, literally, like, board cer certified messes, like, if it wasn't my kid, I'd be like, she's stupid, but she's mine, so I love her, she just doesn't think right, her brain, like, last, this morning, we're cuddling in bed, I, she's laying on my arm, laying on my arm, and she starts doing this, I go, what are you doing, she goes, I'm trying to soften it up. I wish my arm, Isla. I know it's hard as a rock. Dyslexic. Dyslexic as shit. If you gotta read with her, you can't let her read by herself because she just won't. She just won't. She gets too hard. And I, your heart breaks, but I don't want to sit and read a book. I have a hard time reading too. And then you, you got. She just sits there and looks at the word and then, like, tries to guess it off your face, like... Pterodactyl? No, it's the, Isla. Very few, few books you're gonna read in your life are gonna start off with pterodactyl. Crocodile? No, the car, Isla. The car. She's smart, just not like a useful to society smart. Like, you'll never reap the benefits of her intelligence, I promise you that. Unless you got a dead body at your trunk at 2 a.m. There was an attempted kidnapping in a school adjacent to ours. And the teacher sat the kids down, told them they need a safe word. Isla comes home locked in. Dad, we need a safe word. I'm like, okay. How about Agnes? That's the street we live on. She goes, too easy. Too easy? Yeah, too easy. I go, why is that? She goes, Dad, they could guess that. I go, hey, Isla, if someone's guessing at our safe word, don't get in their fucking car. <laughs> I go, how about Priscilla? That's our dog. She goes, are you even thinking? I go, what do you think it should be? She shouldn't even miss a beat. She goes, how about motherfucker? Think about it, Dad. No one's going to say motherfucker to a kid. <laughs> motherfucker it is, motherfucker. And that was our safe word. <laughs> hey, I had to change it. I had to change it. It was too good. I knew I was taking it on stage, so I had to change it. But not before Stephen Frank had to pick him up.
He's like, I'll get the girls. I was like, heads up, our safe word's motherfucker. He's like, I can't say that to your kids. I was like, good luck getting Isla home. He pulls up. Georgia jumps in the car like she's trying to get molested. Isla's locked down. What's her safe word? She's known this guy eight of her nine years. What's her safe word? He's like, I know the safe word. It's a bad word. I'm not saying it out loud. She goes, then I'm not getting in your car. He looks at her and he goes, the safe word is motherfucker. She looks at him in front of all the teachers and goes, I can't hear you. That's this child. You get these two morons together? Holy shit. George is like the caveman that discovered fire. I was like the caveman who discovered stop, drop, and roll. They woke up one morning. One morning they wake up at five in the morning. They were younger. They, I don't know how old they were, but they were younger. Like, I don't trust dads who know exactly how old their kids are. If you're talking to a dad, he's like, 16 months today, he better be married to another dad. And that's, I don't mean that homophobic. I'm not homophobic at all. I'm not, I'm not, I'm definitely not. I'm more like a homochondriac. Like, I'm comfortable if you're gay, I'm comfortable with your lifestyle, I'm just afraid one night you'll get me drunk and trick me into it. And I'll like it. That's my fear. I'll like it and I'll be good at it. Line them up! So I saw gay porn once for like 45 minutes. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Holy shit. Ladies, you gotta step up your blowjob game. Yeah, you're still playing JV basketball and the gay guys are the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, dunking on cocks. Gong! Holding their own head. Fuck this face, son! <laughs> What the fuck are we talking about? I'm literally, how did I get off on this gay rant? The fucking... Oh, my daughters, my daughters, my daughters. Huh. Gay guys chugging cock. Oh, my daughters, okay, here we go. This'll work. My daughters woke up. At five in the morning, five in the morning, they were younger. They were like three and five, four and six. They, they weren't wearing watches. So they wake up at five in the morning, five in the morning, five in the fucking morning. They're training to be farmers or some shit. Either that or they're on a meth lab out of the closet. I don't know. All we hear is them laughing hysterically on the baby monitor like two homeless guys that just found a 20. So I go downstairs, this is what I see. Isla, my baby, is naked, which isn't weird, because apparently one time I told her, sometimes you gotta let your shit breathe. Uh, we only know that, because that's what she told the preschool teacher. Yeah, on the swing set. In a dress, just airing her shit out, just... For JJ. Teacher's like, oh, Isla, honey, where are your panties? She just hops off. Sometimes you gotta let your shit breathe. <laughs> Isla's in the rock, Isla, Isla's naked. George is in the rocking chair laughing hysterically. And our dog's sitting in between them like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> so I come in, I'm like, hey guys, it's really early in the morning. Mommy and I are still sleeping. What could possibly be so funny? Georgia gets in my face and goes, Daddy, you got to see baby Isla's new trick. It is hilarious. I said, what is it? She goes, no, I don't want to spoil it for you, Dad. You got to see it. Isla, show Daddy the trick. So Isla, my baby, the lunatic, the naked one, real quick, real quick, takes her finger and shoves it up her ass. 
Don't fucking judge me. You think I was ready to parent that? It's five in the morning. You think you could have parented it? The super nanny couldn't have stopped it. And now it's in there. As a parent, I kind of want to see the second part of the trick. She takes it out of her ass and puts it in the dog's mouth. Now, hey, 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 fuck you. I saw it, okay? I'm just telling you about it. I, I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you two? What are you guys, Germans? New rule, we do not put our fingers in our butts and then put them in our animals' mouths. I can't believe I'm saying this. Georgia gets on my face and goes, Calm down. It's funny, you just don't get it. <laughs> what, what part of that trick is funny, Georgia? She didn't even miss a beat. She goes, we've been doing it all morning. <laughs> and the dog doesn't know it's poop, Dad. I'm like, fuck it, do it again. They do it again, the dog comes right back like, what's on the finger? What's on the finger? Holy shit! What's on that finger? What's on that finger? So an hour later when my wife woke up, I'm like, you got to see baby Alice's new trick. She's like, what is it? And I was like, I don't want to spoil it for you. You got to see it. Isla, show mommy the trick. And Isla just goes to town. Wham! Wham! My wife's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, give it an hour. It gets funnier. The dog doesn't know it's shit. No, watch the dog. It's a rescue. It's fine. Kids. 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 <laughs> it's the fact that you think about them all the time. You non-stop. I jumped out of a plane with Rachel Ray. Is she here? <laughs> Rachel Ray is a fucking gangster. Like, legit... Get, she comes in, I do her show, she comes backstage at like 8 in the morning, she's got a pint of Guinness, a bowl of chili with a fried egg on top. Oh. She comes back, she goes, I know you're a comic, I thought a beer might loosen you up before the show. I don't know if you like a chili with an egg, I'm like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. As she hands it to me, she goes, what's one thing you'd never do on your show, Bird the Conqueror? I have a show, Bird the Conqueror, where I do extreme activities. She goes, what's, thank you, yeah, thank you. She goes, what's one thing you'd never do? And I had an answer, it's skydiving. I go, I don't, I never go skydiving. She goes, really? I go, never, I don't want to go. She goes, awesome, I'll see you out on stage. I was like, oh, I wonder why she asked that. <laughs> I get out on the stage, and the first thing she says to the crowd is, all right, all right, backstage, Bert said he'd never go skydiving. I'm like, bitch, that was a secret. <laughs> She's like, who wants to see him do it? And now I have 500 women going, do it, fat boy! <laughs> and I got the beer in me, the chili. I'm like, fuck it, let's go, let's go! <laughs> Two weeks later, I'm strapped to a dude. You know that's how you skydive? Just strapped to a dude in a prison rape harness? <laughs> that's how you skydive. Just strap, and he tells you when to walk, when to sit. It is massively emasculating. Has anyone ever been skydiving in here? You've been. You've been. And so you, you get in the plane and you're sitting in a dude's lap. You're sitting, your Navy SEAL moment, and you're sitting in a dude's lap. <laughs> and I start shaking because I'm nervous. I'm like freaking out. And he can feel me because I, I realize as we go to taxi, I realize I haven't flown sober in 20 years. <laughs> sober in a big plane in 20 years and I haven't flown in a dude's lap in 42 <laughs> and he feels me shaking and he's like what's the matter like what do you mean what's the matter I go I'm nervous he goes about what what do you mean about what he goes what are you nervous what are you afraid of I go I don't know you'll get hard <laughs> you'll, you'll get hard that'll trigger me I'll get hard We'll both get hard, then we'll jump out of the plane. Our chute won't open, and that's how two backpackers will find us. You fucking me into the earth. You fucking me into the planet 
That'll be the how I go. This guy craved dick so bad. He had a man harness him up and fuck him out of his shoes until his head exploded in the woods. I go, I'm nervous our chute won't open. <laughs> he goes, you couldn't kill us if you tried. I'm like, I'm a smart guy, I can fucking figure it out. <laughs> I lean over to Rachel and I grab her leg, her leg, just, it's the most, just grab her leg and I start squeezing. She goes, what's the matter? I go, I don't want to do this. She goes, I, I think you're doing it. She's like, you're at the front of the tube of toothpaste, everyone's out behind, you're going, you're definitely going. I go, no, I, I don't want to. And she goes, you, look, and now the engines kick in and she starts yelling at me. She goes, look, you'll be fine. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not watch me go out the door. You will freak the fuck out. <laughs> I'm like, who taught you how to talk someone off a ledge? <laughs> we get up to our cruising altitude. Her and her dude get up perfectly like Danny and Sandy. Just wop, bam, loom, hop, wop, bam, boom. <laughs> She posts up at the door, looks me in the eyes, does her read one tape camera. I'm Rachel Ray, I'm at 30,000 feet with Bertha Conger, we're about to jump up early on an airplane. Who's ready? Who? Yellow or whatever. And the fucking, let's go. And then looks at me and goes, Bert. I'm like, yeah. She goes, don't watch this. And they get sucked out of the fucking plane. And I have panic shoot out of my asshole. I grab onto the cameraman who's not wearing a parachute. There's an open door at 13,000 feet, and as soon as I touched him, he just starts kicking me. Get off me, asshole! <laughs> Sound guy posts up in the corner with the boom mic like a gladiator. Get him down! Get him down! <laughs> my guy just takes over and baby Bjorns me. <laughs> Here we go! Takes me to the corner, and I lock in. I go, I'm having second thoughts! He's like, we're going in three. I'm like, I'm not hard yet. <laughs> we're going in two. And I was like, you go by yourself. I'll meet you down there. And then he says, oh my God, what's wrong with your straps? I'm like, what? <laughs> and we go scream into the earth at 100 miles an hour. This guy's in my ear like, do you want to catch up with Rachel? I'm like, fuck her. She's dead to me. <laughs> It is, it is an epiphanous moment, dare I say. And my therapist says I have a low threshold for epiphanous moments, but. <laughs> and I always say, like, did you want to go skydiving? Okay, the people that don't want to go skydiving are who should go skydiving. It's those that don't want to go that appreciate it the most. You go and you're just viking all the way. Ah! People who don't want to go, there's a moment where you realize the dice have been rolled. There's nothing you can do to change this. You're either going to live or die in five minutes, and you can't take a pill or start working out to stop it. It is out of your control, and you are forced with a decision. How do you meet your maker? Do you go out like a Viking? Or do you start crying like a baby? Oh. I picked, the, I picked the Viking. I, at that moment, I said, I've had a beautiful life. Let's do it. Ah! Until the chute opened. Then I started crying aggressively. <laughs> like bad. Like in a dude's lap. Have you ever cried in a man's lap? Have you ever had a man take you out to the middle of a field and sit in your lap and just sob silently? <laughs> That's technically what I'm doing to this poor guy. Because the first thing I thought of was, my kids, I'm going to get to see my kids again. And pizza, like I get pizza. And I just started sobbing under this canopy and the poor guy's like, dude, it's going to be okay. Like, you, we're, we're, we did it, we did it. It was so bad when we went to land, he's like, clean yourself up, they're going to think I did something to you. And the, oh, the lasting thought that stuck with me was my children, that's it. I go, my children. They're gonna have a, they have a dad. Like that, what? That is not what I signed up for when I picked my wife out of a bowling alley. Like, <laughs> that makes no sense. We met at a bowling alley. But when I met her, 
Like, I didn't sign up for the vulnerability. That's the part about having kids that fucks you up. Is the vulnerability. Do you have children? You do. How many you got? You got one? No, you're barely in it. <laughs> Wait till you got two and you go, oh, shit, if we lose one, it's going to be awkward. <laughs> children, the thing that'll, and I don't know if you've been there. How old's your kid? Two. Oh, you're brand new to the game, man. Wait till they meet disaster in their life, or they meet letdown, or, oh. We took the girls, we took the girls to school this year. Uh, Leanne takes Georgia, I take Isla. Walk up, first day of school, and here's the thing with girls, first day of school, you hope they have friends in their class, or it's a shit show. <laughs> so Leanne's got Georgia, I take Isla, we go up to the, like on the fence, they put all the names on the fence. I go up to the fence, Isla can't read, she's like, <laughs> I, look at the, I look at the list, room nine, I walk over to room nine, here's what I see, or as we walk over to room nine, this is the first kid I see, Chinese kid, short, dumpy, big, big like baby beluga head, his hair starts in the middle, right, and he's just got this stare, like a dog who's got peanut butter stuck in his throat, like, kid behind him, hand liquor, just uh, uh. like he's trying to get to the center of it, like uh, uh, uh. kid behind him, tippy toe walker, you know that kid, handful of Pokemon cards, huh, anyone want to trade, anyone want to trade, Isla sees this and is like, can I talk to you for a second, we go over to the handball courts, I sit down, this is what's happening. Uh, Isla's got her head back like this. I don't know what she's doing. She's got her head back like this. What she's doing is she's holding the tears in her eyes. Don't get me fucking started. <laughs> she brings her head down to me and, she, and her tear falls out. She looks at me dead in the eyes and she goes, Daddy, am I in this stupid class? <laughs> I didn't fucking sign up for this, okay? I was a goddamn stallion when my wife found me. A st a untethered, beautiful animal just running at my own speed. I was gorgeous. No one controlled me. I decided what I wanted to do. If it rained, I'd run in the rain. Just mist coming off my mane and tail and and just rearing up outside the village for all the villagers to see. And my wife was this diseased settler with rickets, like, Hur. I need me a stallion. So she snuck up on me with a bag of carrots. Carrots are blowjobs. And was like, Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Here you go, boy. Try it. You like it. No, you like it. I bet you like it. I bet you like it. And you like it. You try the carrot. You like it. But what you don't realize is that when they're handing you the carrot, with the other hand, they start petting you. That's them taming you. Oh, you have a beautiful mane. Oh. You should start wearing khakis. <laughs> Oh, it's okay, boy. It's okay. You should get rid of your Jeep. And then, one day, out of nowhere, the petting makes sense. You feel them pet you, and you're like, oh, yeah. Huh. Maybe I should go to the dentist more than once every 10 years. And then, you don't even realize it, but one morning you go to run, just like you used to run, just like everyone loved to watch you run, and as you take off, you feel someone pull back on the reins, like, whoa, we don't do shots at a child's party. <laughs> and there I am, just an old nag now. I don't even get carrots anymore, I just get hay. If I do get carrots, I gotta throw a temper tantrum for them. 
and now I'm sitting in a pair of sweatpants by the handball courts, and I got a nine-year-old breaking my heart at 7.45 in the morning. This isn't what I fucking signed up for. And I'm looking at her, and I'm like thinking, how do I deal with it? Like, like, hey, it's okay. Stupid glasses are fun. Like, <laughs> lowered expectation, it's higher rewards, you know? I, you know, I, a lot of my friends, the guys that I smoke pot, they all stupid <laughs> is, stupid is, is stupid duh, like, and Leanne comes over and she's like, hey, what's going on here? Now we're both tearing up, we're both crying, and she goes, what's going on? And I was like, I'm like, she, we think she's in the stupid class. <laughs> she brought it up, I definitely agree, I definitely agree. And Leanne's like, hold on. I go, no, no, you hold on. You got to look at that class. It looked like a cast of Goonies. Like... <laughs> and Leanne's like, hold on, hold on. Everyone stop crying. There's no such thing as the stupid class. I'm like, meh, I beg to disagree. <laughs> She's like, no, Isla, honey. If there was a stupid class, they would have had to call me two months ago and say, hey, we're putting Isla in the stupid class. And I would have taken you out of the school in a second. I would have never let you them do that to you. But... If they did call me two months ago, Isla, and I knew today was your day to go into the stupid class. I knew that. Do you think I would have let you roll in with dad? <laughs> and that makes sense to Isla. She's like, yeah, he's not the heavy lifting parent. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Isla, you're with me. There's nothing wrong. She goes, come on, let's go look at your class. So they go walk over to the class and all Isla's friends, Lily, Dakota, Kylie, they're all in the class. And Leanne's like, hey, your friends are in there. Are your friends stupid? And Isla's like, no. She's like, you get in line. You have a fantastic year. She comes walking over to me. I'm still by the fucking handball courts. <laughs> she comes walking over to me, and I am blown away. She comes up. She's like, hey. I go, I did not parent that well. <laughs> she's like, no shit. <laughs> I go, I thought she was in the fucking stupid class. <laughs> Leanne's like, she is. You were going to tell her? I go, I was going to tell her. It's like, you belong in the fucking stupid class. <laughs> Isla's getting, Isla hates school. She's getting, I, in all fairness, she's getting her ass handed to her daily. Like, it's bad. When you're dyslexic, it's tough. She, I dropped her off, like, probably two weeks ago. I go to give her a kiss on the cheek goodbye. She grabs my neck, like, she doesn't want me to go. And then whispers in my ear and goes, pick me up early. <laughs> I'm like, well, let me run that by mom. She goes, uh, hey, hold on. Do you have to run it by mom? And now she's in my head. I'm like, yeah, fuck that bitch. I make the calls around here. If I want to pick you up, I'll pick you up early. I go, but wait, what do you mean? She, well, like, what time? She goes, listen, mom's got therapy at noon. <laughs> she leaves like 11.15. If you show up 11.30, you got to pick me up anyway. She'll have no idea you got me early. I go, what would I say? She goes, tell him I have a dentist appointment. I go, how long have you been thinking about this? She goes, Dad, tell him I have a dentist appointment. I promise no one's going to know. I went, okay. I go home. I feel like I'm about to commit a bank robbery. I'm sitting on the couch, and Leanne just gets up. She's like, oh, 11.15, I got to go to therapy. I'm like, like fucking clockwork. She leaves. I'm like, screw it. I'm picking her up early. I go into the office. I don't even have to say anything. I walk in, they're like, are you Isla's daddy? I go, I am. They're like, her tooth has been killing her all day. <laughs> Isla comes out of the nurse's office, ice pack on her cheek, eyes are like, start the car. <laughs> we get in the car, first thing's out of her mouth, ice cream and putt-putt, let's do it, big guy. <laughs> Like, hey, you made the day, let's do it. Yeah. It was a great, it was a great day. I think the best part of the day was just having a lie that me and her knew and lying to my other daughter and my wife together as a team. It was kind of like bonding. I put her to bed that night, I go, listen, if I ever cheat on your mom, I'm gonna need your help. I'm not cheating on my wife.
I'm not cheating on my wife for a number of reasons. This being one. <laughs> I don't even know, I don't know if I'm doing it right. I've never had that like security that women have, you know, that like, there's a, there's a, like an air of, con like when it comes to sex, women just know they hit it out of, the have you ever, is that your man right there, young lady? Have you ever given him an orgasm? Look at her, she scoffs at me, like rolls her eyes, goes, yeah. Would you bet your life on it? She's like, uh, yeah. Would you bet your life on it? <laughs> well, look at him, he's like, I don't know. Because <laughs> we don't know. You be, I'm telling you, it's, you know if you've done your job right. Because there's proof. That happened right there. See that? There, got it. Colonel Mustard in the library with a candlestick right there. <laughs> but every time we have sex with you guys, it's like, Kaiser Soze, did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I'll put it, I'll take it this far. This guy right here, he's your boyfriend, right? Sir, be honest. If I said to you right now, I will give you $15 million tax-free if you can bring one person on this stage and give them an orgasm within 15 minutes. You think he's picking a chick? Fuck no. Look at him, he's already standing up. He's like, I'll jack you off right now. Put in work, let's go. Start the car. Time! You think he's gonna pick a chick? You think he's picking his chick? No way, too complicated. I don't wanna face the audience, you face the audience. Oh my God, it's fright, they're all staring at me. I don't, I can hear people laughing, they're making fun of me. Just stop it, I'll just, don't worry, I, I'm sorry I messed this up. And he's definitely not picking another chick. You think he's gonna roll the dice on a brand new chick? Try to figure that out with the clock running, just. Back and like, like this, or Cinnabons, Cinnabons. Cinnabon, no, paint the fence, paint the fence, paint the fence, paint the fence, paint the fence. What? What? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's okay? The in go. You ever done that one? You ever try the one where you go in the garage but up where you keep the bikes? You ever tried that? And you fiddle with the bikes? Come hither, bikes. Come hither. Come hither, bikes. Come hither. I fucked that one up. Tried it. Went right past the bikes. Ended up in the attic. Just ripping out insulation like a raccoon. Just it was it was so bad the homeowner had to come out and be like, everyone out of the fucking garage. <laughs> Women are complicated. Just just like they're the way they think. First time I had sex with my wife. We've been dating a while. It's that beautiful moment, I don't know. We've all felt it where you're making out on a couch and then you undo the shirt and, it, and your heart skips a beat. And you're like, oh God, this is happening. This is really happening to me. And I, I was head over heels for her and kissing, shirt comes off, pant button comes off. She stops me, she goes, there's something I need to tell you. I was like, this bitch has herpes. <laughs> and I start thinking about it in my head, like, does it matter? <laughs> I mean, I'm 28, I made it this far. I think they gotta have an outbreak. What are the odds it's the outbreak season? And if you wear a, I don't know, I don't even know, but if you wear a condom, does it, I don't know, but in my head, I'm like, I wish I had paid more attention in health class. <laughs> And my wife looks at me and goes, I'm in debt. I was like, I, I thought you had herpes. She goes, no, why would I have herpes? I go, why would you stop someone before they're about to have sex to tell them you're in debt? She goes, because I thought we were getting serious. I go, I'm trying to fuck you, not your bank account. 
She goes, no, if we're going to have sex, that means we're getting serious. And if we're getting serious, you need to know I'm $25,000 in debt. That hangs over my head. And I go, hey, I'm trying to fuck you, not Fannie Mae, all right? Let's do this. <laughs> and we had sex that night, and we fell in love. And we got married, and we had kids. And did you know when you get married, you accrue someone's debt? <laughs> I wish she had had herpes. What's crazy now is there's like a, like a thing in our relationship, I don't know that this happens to everyone, but like nowadays we almost get more passionate talking about money than we do sex. Like it's easier for us, like we talk about adding onto our house, we're like, ooh, oh, you wanna, you wanna open a bottle of wine maybe, huh? Talk about a brand new bathroom, huh? What the fuck? And then you have sex and it's just like, I mean, it's almost, I, I don't mean to like, suck the bromance out of it, but like, I don't hit on her. I'm not gonna fucking hit on my wife. Get shot down by your wife. Do you know how humiliating that is? To be like, hey, what do you think? And get the fuck off me. Okay, awesome. Now I feel like a human piece of garbage. Cool. I can't fuck anyone in the world, especially not you. And that's how, oh, this is great. You ever try to pull out a brand new move in the bedroom? I tried to do reverse cowgirl. I said to her in the middle of having sex, I go, hey, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna try reverse cowgirl? She looks at me and she goes, where did we hear about this? <laughs> Some of the fellas down by the basketball courts were talking about it. And then she just gets like, she's a very sweet woman. But she just gets like, like, fine, what is it? Like, tell me, tell me what to do, tell me what to do. Like, 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 it's almost like we're lab partners. Like, what the fuck tell me? <laughs> tell me what to do, I'll do it, if that's what you're into. I'm like, that's not what I'm into. I'm just saying, let's try it. Maybe we'll like it, I don't know. She said, no, just tell me what to do. I'm like, oh, okay. I've never seen this part of the porn <laughs> where the guy walks her through it, like, I go, you, like, you, you uh, face the other direction. She's like, I face the wall? I was like, well, I, or, or the camera, I guess that is, they face the camera at that point. I don't know why they do that. I, I don't know. I've never done this, okay? She goes, no, tell me what to do. I'll do it. I go, will you turn around? She's like, and just look at the wall? I go, yeah, look at the fuck. they're your eyes. Look at whatever you want to fucking look at. Fine, if this is what you're into, like, that's how you want to start a brand new sex move. If this is what you're into. <laughs> is this right? Like we're on a motorcycle. Is this right? Yeah, I think, no, no, I mean, tell, do I hold on to your feet? That's not sexy. Just looking at your feet. I'm just looking at your feet right now. I'm like, you can look at whatever you want to. Is it, are you looking at my butthole? Is that what you're looking at? Does this turn you on to look at my butthole? Okay, okay, I'm starting to feel disconnected. I'm feeling very disconnected. I don't even, I feel, I'm being very disconnected. I'm like, can you just not be the person I own a home with and be a whore for five minutes? I mean, I, I make that sound bad, but don't, I mean, the, the alternative is what? I get like a young girlfriend? Fuck that. I can't, I'm not, I'm not shitting on young people. You guys look very young. I'm sure it's very fun to get naked with you and touch you. That part, it's not bad. It's the talking to you afterwards that would be somewhat problematic. Like, I don't, what, like, what would I say? What would I say to like a 22 year old girl after sex? Like, hey, do you want to play on your iPad? <laughs> oh, Snapchat's got some new apps, cool. I need a ride or die bitch. I need a woman. I need a woman with some flaws. A, a woman with like, like a literally, a kind of girl that will blow you and book you a cardiologist appointment. <laughs> 
kind of woman that'll blow you to spider runny nose. Just. That's a woman for you right there. Just taking one for the team. Yeah. Kind of woman that'll fart during sex. Yeah, my wife will fart during sex. She had two kids. She's not rocking the original rims and tires, okay? <laughs> two kids, she's riding dirty on 22s. Just boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Ha, ha, ha. in action. Sipping in the bud. Everlasting. Outlast everlasting. There goes an ear guys on. It's true. Ladies, I hate to say this, but after 40, vaginas start aging exponentially. <laughs> like dog ears, just not that no listen, not it's not just you. It's all of us. I mean men, once we get 40, our dick starts doing this Benjamin Buttons thing. Where it looks younger and younger. Like, I think our bodies get bigger and our dick stays the same size. Looks like a squatter in the middle of a bustling city. Like, hell no, we won't go. I get naked now. And that's love. When your wife sees you naked, when your dick's the smallest it's ever been. Like, right after you get out of the gym and she just sees it and goes, oh, little guy. <laughs> Look at that little Can I flick him? Just changes. I'm cool with it changing. I'm just saying, like, I mean, a little bit of upkeep, ladies. Like, it's like, I mean, I remember when my, I met my wife's vagina. I remember it just, it was beautiful. It was like, it was curb appeal. You know, like, it was waxed and shined and, and buffed and fluffed, fluffed. With, with those lace thong panties that you could take off with a pinky, just... And when you did, it was like you unleashed a princess, just... Oh, oh. I saw it the other day. Ooh. It was after drop-off. I had to pull off those big comfort cotton panties. The ones that don't give you a yeast infection, you know those ones? Just, uh, all the hairs matted down. Looks like the crazy cat lady's house. And it's just staring at you like, hey, my man. Young blood! Young blood! Can I get a cigarette? <laughs> she farts. <laughs> Not like for money, but just it happens. <laughs> Not all the time. I mean, but not all the time, but I wouldn't bet against it. I take the over. <laughs> but that's part of marriage. That's part of marriage. Is that you? That is part of love. Is when you accept a person for their flaws. And like that. And that's when you know you're a man. When your woman farts during sex because you move her over too quickly and she just farts, and you don't say a fucking word, and you go, "I didn't hear it. I love you." It's like I didn't hear it either. I love you. The dog's up on the bed. Are we farting? I'll take it this far. I'll take it this far. My wife's farted during oral sex. You know what they call that? Commitment. When you take one on the chin for the team, just you're like, what the fuck? You didn't know you had one in the chamber? No, you gotta warn me. I'm still down here. 
No, you could have shit my mouth. No, I have a beard, it's still in here. And then she starts crying, I go, what the fuck are you crying about? I'm the one in the hurt locker. She's like, you're gonna talk about this on stage. You're fucking right I am. In all fairness, I didn't bring it up until the second time it happened. I was like, fuck it, if it happened to me twice, it's had to have happened to somebody else. I can't be the only one out here going, really, no one else has catched this one on the button? That's marriage. She go, uh, my, wife's a, my wife's a fantastic woman. She really is. She's the kind of person like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't raise these kids. She like researches good schools. She researched a school one time. She goes, uh, it's a great school. There are a lot of Koreans. I went, okay. <laughs> we show up, it's 98% Korean. No, I'm, no, listen, I'm just a regular person. I'm not, I have no hate in my heart for anyone whatsoever. I'm a real motherfucker. I walk into a room with 400 Korean families and five white families and a black family hiding in the corner. I just walked in and I was like, what the fuck is this? And my wife's like, what? I go, what do you mean, what? Like, she goes, what? I go, the fucking Taekwondo tournament going on in here. You don't see this? You know, am I the only one that sees this? She's like, Babe, I said there was going to be a lot of Koreans. I'm like, bitch, a lot of Koreans is seven. <laughs> this is a dick load. This is a boatload. You should have said, you want to go to North Korea? Because that's where we are right now. <laughs> she go, maybe if you get to know some of the parents, you won't have a problem with it. So I go over to the white and black people hiding in the corner like, I'm here. What are we going to do? <laughs> Thank God there was a black woman there to keep shit real first words out of her mouth. You see all these motherfucking Koreans? I just met my best friend. It is a beautiful moment when a black woman and a white man can commit a hate crime together. Sandy is her name and we start talking. Then a white woman comes over and screws it up. Just comes over and goes, what do you guys have? Sandy leans into me and she goes, we're about to have the bird flu if we don't leave this bitch. <laughs> the lady goes, what? And Sandy just looks at me and goes, they're your people, you handle this. <laughs> I go, I, uh, I have girls. She goes, oh, that's so great. What are their names? I said, Georgia and Isla. She goes, oh, I have a boy. I was like, cool. <laughs> She's like, don't you want to know his name? <laughs> I'm like, not at all. <laughs> she goes, his name is John Henry. And I start laughing hysterically because that's what I call my dick. <laughs> I've, I've just never met a John Henry before. I'm like, are you serious? She's like, do you know a John Henry? I'm like, hell yeah! Really good. He's like my best friend. And I start talking to these women for the whole orientation surreptitiously about my junk. About my buddy, John Henry, who lives down south and is bald. Until my wife gets done her Pygal tournament and comes over to us. It's like... What are you guys laughing about? And this woman's like, you're never gonna believe this. My son's name is John Henry. My wife's like, oh, that's what he calls his dick. <laughs> Sandy falls out laughing. And I watch this woman realize all the stories I've been telling her about how John Henry has two roommates. how their next door neighbor is an asshole. <laughs> how he tells everyone he's six foot, but he's really five seven. <laughs> I thought it was funny.
I think what I find is funny, I don't think other people find funny. Like, like no, like I have, I have like a like a disturbed sense of humor sometimes. Like I, I checked into this hotel room one time in Cincinnati, and uh, I had like five bags with me because I was on the road doing Travel Channel stuff and doing stand up. So I had five bags with me. This Bellman, uh, tall, young, skinny, black kid. Oh, why is he gonna be black, Bert? Because he fucking was. <laughs> he comes. He comes. He comes over, he grabs all my bags, puts them on a cart, checks me in, takes me into the elevator, and in the elevator he goes, man, you got a lot of bags, what do you do for a living? I go, I'm a comedian. He goes, you put all your gags in these bags? <laughs> Immediately I'm horrified because I think he thinks I'm a prop comic. <laughs> and so I'm trying to think of a joke. The whole ride in the elevator, I'm trying to think of a joke to make this kid laugh, but I can't think of anything. We get up to our floor, door opens, and as soon as it opens, the door next to us opens, and an and a older white guy walks out, like maybe 67 years old. Bam, and he walks out just behind us, and as we walk down the hallway, he walks right behind us. Kid's pushing, I'm walking. This, kid's, this guy's right here, five feet behind us. As we walk, bam, we take a left, he takes a left. We take a right, he takes a right. He's keeping pace with us. You wanna be like, hey, asshole, he just fake tie your shoe for a little bit, <laughs> or jog past us, but you're creeping us out, George Zimmerman, so. <laughs> Finally, we get to the very end of the hall. My door is the last door on the left. And it turns out the old man's room is right next to mine. Now, it's been uncomfortable. I haven't made this kid laugh yet. So as a joke, as a guy opens, goes to open his door, I lean over and I go, hey man, if you want, we can open up the connecting door and we can hang out this weekend. <laughs> he was not ready for that. <laughs> and now he can't get his key to work. He's like. Uh, no, thank you. No, I'm, I'm good. And I said, no, think about it. When was the last time you made a new friend? <laughs> we'll talk each other to sleep at night, wake each other up in the morning. I got towels, you got towels, you know. <laughs> he gets his door open and he goes, I don't think I want that to happen. But before he can close it, I stop and I go, well, listen, if you change your mind, just knock and scratch. <laughs> he looks at me dead seriously. He goes, I, I probably won't be doing that. I look over to the kid to see if I made the kid laugh. He's, he's already in the room. I did the joke for nobody. I literally walk in the room and he's not even like putting the bags up. I'm not being, but like he's just dumping them on the floor, like flipping them on the floor. And now I'm like, I gotta tip him, but I don't know how much to tip him. I normally I tip five bucks for a bag, but it's five bags, it's 25 bucks. He just put them on a cart, but here's the problem. I'm doing the math in my head. In front of him, I'm going, what is it, 25 bucks? A lot of money for just flipping them on the thing. Man. The kid sees me doing this and he goes, sir, you don't have to give me anything. I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I gotta give you something. You brought him all the way up. He goes, no, that's what I got hired to do was to take your bags from your car to your room. That's what I get paid for. You don't have to give me anything. I go, no, but you brought them all the way up. I gotta give you something. And he goes, no, you don't. Just knock and scratch. <laughs> I'm like, seriously? He's like, dead serious. <laughs> so me and this kid go up to the door and I knock and I scratch and you hear the old man go, I don't want to fucking hang out! <laughs> oh my God. I thought this kid was gonna laugh himself to death. He literally was doubled over like, do it again, do it again. Best part of the story is he goes down and Googles me and shows me to every black dude who works in the hotel. So for the whole weekend, anytime I walked in, they're like, oh, knock scratch, motherfucker. <laughs> knock scratch, man. I'm not, I'll answer the note.
I fought a bear one time. Yeah. Uh, I used to have a show on FX called Hurt Burt where I took dangerous men's jobs. It was a TV show. It was back in 2002, I think. Uh, I, I was a dominatrix gimp. I was an MMA fighter. I was a rodeo clown. I was a football player. I was a stunt pilot. I sang with great white sharks out of the cage. And one day they called me up and they're like, hey, do you want to fight a bear? I was like, who does that for a living? And they're like, you do on Thursday. <laughs> I show up. It is a nine-foot grizzly bear just sitting on a park bench, as dumb as you think a bear would look, just... <laughs> so I go up to the bear. I'm like 28 years old, probably. I go up to the bear and I stick my hand out in front of his snout so he can get my scent. The trainer sees this and he goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm letting him get my scent. <laughs> and he goes, hey, buddy, this is a grizzly bear, not a labradoodle, okay? <laughs> he goes, we have protocol. I go, what's that? And he pulls me over the side and he hands me five marshmallows. He goes, when the bear's not looking, take a marshmallow, put it in your mouth. Then, nonchalantly, walk in front of the bear like, huh? Show him the marshmallow like, huh? <laughs> and allow him the opportunity to engage you and take the marshmallow out of your mouth with his mouth. This way he'll learn to trust you. And I was like, fuck that. <laughs> Who thought of this, the bear? Is this the bear's idea? And the guy just looks me down and he goes, hey, this is how we do it. My whole crew's behind him like, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. So I don't know any better. I'm 28 years old. I go behind the bear, I take a marshmallow, I put it in my mouth, I walk in front of him like a street hooker, like, huh? 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 The bear sees the marshmallow and lights up just like, huh? I'm going, he rushes me with the grace of a frat boy at 5 a.m. and tongues it out of my mouth. Bears never brush their teeth. I'm making out with a homeless person five times in a row. Just I get done, the trainer goes, fantastic, we're ready. I go, hold on, I haven't learned anything. He goes, what, are you kidding me? You learned the most important lesson. I go, what's that? And he goes, the bear likes marshmallows. <laughs> I go, what could that do me? And he goes, listen, if you get in trouble, just stand your ground, look the bear in the face, and just go, marshmallow. <laughs> and he'll know you're going to do your marshmallow trick, so he'll give you some space. But more importantly, we'll hear you say that, and we'll know you're in trouble, so we'll get you out of there. We'll take the bear. We'll, get, we'll split it up. I go, yeah, but he thinks they're inside me. <laughs> what if he's like, don't worry, I'll get him, and just <laughs> rips me open. He goes, you'll be fine. Let's go. And I swear to God, the bear is smiling. <laughs> just, oh, I know how to get marshmallows around here, bitch. I got to tap you out. <laughs> Rushes me, grabs me by both ears, lifts me off the ground, and starts ragdolling me and growling. <laughs> I'm going, marshmallow, marshmallow! <laughs> but no one can hear me because there's a nine-foot grizzly bear going, <laughs> All of a sudden, he drops me, grabs me by the hip, spins me doggy style, locks in in a bear hug, and starts grinding on my ass. <laughs> now we're both facing the crew and the trainer. I'm going, fucking marshmallow! <laughs> marshmallow, mar get me the fuck out of here, marshmallow! <laughs> Everyone's laughing, except for the trainer, who has a look of panic. He jumps in our eye line and goes, go limp! I'm like, please be talking to me right now. And not the, the is there a bear cock climbing up my jeans? About the split center scene, just marshmallow. So I go limp. 
Now it looks like I'm getting day raped by a bear. Just, uh, 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 uh. I slide out of his grip, and that's the last thing I remember. Because apparently his instincts took over, and he sat on my face. And the best way to get bear balls out of your mouth isn't by saying marshmallow. My wife, my wife who I had known maybe three months, I had invited her to the set to impress her. <laughs> my wife's a redneck, like a legit redneck, like, like hardcore, like her parents met on AncestryMingle.com, like. <laughs> when she talks, you smell biscuits, like. She, my point is, she's not afraid of big animals. She just goes over, grabs a marshmallow out of the bag, puts it in her mouth, stands by my feet and goes, Haw! The bear then takes his balls out of my mouth, goes over to her, they, he takes the marshmallow out of her mouth, they take my wife one way, the bear the other way, they drag me under a tree and that's where I wake up. Under a tree in the lap of my producer, Tim Scott, who's from like the upper top of Minnesota. Real dry, still had a flat top, cherubic face. I open my eyes, I see him, and I go, what happened? He's like, oh, well, uh, you got raped and teabagged by a bear. <laughs> you might want to get tested. He's like, but that, that girl, that Leanne girl, she, I think she saved your life. And my wife comes over at that moment, like it's in a movie, like my wife just comes walking over, her body's blocking the sun, all I see is like an orb around her, and she leans in, and as she does, you can see the sun running through her hair light, she just looks me in the eyes, she goes, are you okay? <laughs> and I looked up at her at that moment, and we all know that moment when you know without a doubt, that's the moment, and I know you're like, really, that's when you knew? Oh, fuck it, this is my narrative, okay? I looked up at her from the ground and saw her with a halo from the Lord himself and knew without a doubt I would never do that for her. <laughs> Still wouldn't. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian Mafia. Here's how it happened. I went to school at Florida State. I was not a very good student. I was there uh, like seven years. I was there th in most of the 90s. I, I was in college longer than grunge music was around. <laughs> so, this is how bad of a student I was. One time I signed up for a Russian class thinking it was Spanish, and it took three classes before I realized, I don't think this is Spanish. <laughs> so I got up to leave. The teacher, who was hot, he definitely worked out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. It was a girl. It was a girl. And she was hot. She still is hot. She stopped me. She goes, don't go anywhere. I need 14 kids to teach this class. You're the 14th. I need to teach this class in order to get my master's. So... If you sit back down, you don't have to do anything all semester, and I'll just give you a C. I was like, uh, Strauss boots you, bitches. I'm back. <laughs> so I took Russian one, two, three, and four, never learned a word. <laughs> Think about what I'm saying. I took two years of a language, took four semesters of my college career, four, four semesters. Russian four was taught in Russian. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it's like to go to a class and sit there like an immigrant at the DMV all day? Like, <laughs> The end of Russian 4, same teacher pulls me aside. She's like, we're taking a trip to Russia. If you go, you'll get a minor. I was like, okay, hold on. <laughs> you know, I can't really speak read, write, or understand the language, right? She's like, I'm fucking well aware of that. <laughs> you gotta remember, 
I was taking tests in a language with which I was unfamiliar with their alphabet. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it's like to take a test and make up hieroglyphics? <laughs> and the answer is star circle hashtag shoe. <laughs> she goes, it doesn't matter. We need kids to make this trip happen, and if you go with all the classes you've taken and the ones you will take, you will get a minor. And I was like, that's all you had to say. Let's go to Russia and fuck some minors. <laughs> it's a different, it was different minor, obviously. Learned that the hard way. So we went to Russia in 1995. This is when the mob ran everything, and they told us that our very first night. They sat the whole class down, they're like, listen, we have paid off the mafia to keep you safe. In exchange for our money, they give us two young gangsters. I'm in the room like, this trip just got fucking awesome. <laughs> the word for gangster in Russian is banditi. They go, these banditi are going to live with us. They're going to walk you to class. They're going to walk you back from class. They're going to take you on field trips, walk you back from field trips. Do not speak to them. They're in the mafia. Do not look at them. Do not engage them. Do not interact with them. I was like, they're going to be my best fucking friends. <laughs> so the first night, I grab a bottle of vodka and a six-pack of Baltica, which is our local beer, and I plan a sentence. I was going to say, Strasvutsia, Minyasavut Bert, Ochimbriatna, Yarabota, you koshka. Uh. Uh, uh. Does anyone speak Russian in here? I love that someone says no. No. I did a head count earlier. It doesn't look like it. I'll tell you what this sentence says. It's a badass sentence. I worked all day on it. Hello. My name is Bert. It's very nice to meet you. I work pussy. <laughs> Kind of. It really means I work with cats. I didn't know the fucking language. What do you expect? Uh, it doesn't matter because the second the door opens and I'm face to face with a real Russian gangster with the wife beater and the tattoos with the track pants and the cigarette. And he, he just stares me up and down. A frat boy from Florida State. I was wearing a fanny pack. He just looks at me and goes, Stole. I fucking panicked. And everything I had planned on saying flooded out of my head. And all I said to him in Russian in his doorway was, I am the machine. <laughs> and he started laughing. He goes, what did you say? I was like, I'm the machine. <laughs> he grabs me and he goes, come in and tell my friends. Brings me in a room full of nine Russian gangsters drinking and smoking and just goes, stop. <laughs> tell them what you said. Now I'm like, fuck it, I'm the machine! <laughs> they looked at each other, looked at me, and they're like, fuck it, he's the machine! <laughs> and I became the machine, and these guys loved me. Yes. You, you gotta realize, though, the reason they loved me is I went shot for shot with them that night, all night long, until like four in the morning, but all I knew how to say in their language was, I'm the machine! And I fuck cats. <laughs> so, we did everything together. We, uh, like the guy that answered the door, his name was Igor. He was like my best friend. We did everything together. We ran a pool hall scam. We stole a boat. <laughs> it was literally the best summer of my life. And then one day, the whole class is taking a trip to Moscow. It's an overnight train trip. And I say to Igor, I go, this is going to be a blast. We've got to be in the same cabin. And he goes, I can't go. I said, why not? And he goes, different mafia runs train, different mafia runs Moscow. I said, well, hold on. What's that mean for me? And he goes, don't worry. I set up banditi. I tell them about you. They'll take care of you. Sure enough, we get to the train station, and he introduces me to my two new gangsters, Igor and Igor. <laughs> And he says to me, he goes, guys, this is the machine. If you give the machine vodka, you'll have a great time. 
The big ear the two Igors looks like a kid on Christmas. He's like, oh, I can't wait to play with a machine. He grabs me and he goes, the machine doesn't sit in coach. The machine sits in first class with us. I'm like, that's what I'm fucking talking about. We go to first class and it is pimped out with booze, food, and here's the real gangster part. Second the train takes off out of the station, everyone that works on the train comes in to pay their respects. The conductor walked in. Rips off the stars and stripes to his shirt, places them on my lap and goes, this is a present for the machine. It would be an honor to do a shot of vodka with the machine. I'm 22 years old thinking, huh, these machine stories might have gotten out of control. <laughs> we drink all the booze in an hour and Big Igor stands up and he goes, machine, we go to the bar cart to get more vodka. I'm like, fuck it, I'm in the mob, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> we roll into the bar cart like a big dick in a locker room, just... Not that I've ever been that guy, but I've seen it. <laughs> Just smack. You know the look where everyone looks like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> oh, someone's here, okay, all right. <laughs> Igor looks at me, and in Russian he says, machine, go behind the bar and grab bread. In Russian, in Russian. And I understood him. For a second, I'm like, I'm fucking learning. <laughs> I'm learning the language my way, not through flashcards and textbooks, but by joining the mafia. <laughs> I get behind the bar, I'm like, Igor, I know what you said. He's like, go for your machine. Can the machine find cheese? And I was like, Sir, cheese, I got it. Give me another one. And he's like, grab vodka. I was like, I already know that one. Give me another one. He's like, grab the money. I'm like, Huh? He goes, grab the fucking money. And I realized at that instant, uh, we're robbing the bar cart. And I'm the one doing it, hooked on phonics style. I grab the money, walk out. Two of my classmates see me and they're like, you're in so much trouble. Go back to our first class cabin and within five minutes, the head chaperone of this train trip, not the whole trip, just this train trip. She was an English teacher who did not speak Russian, who hated me before I robbed the train. <laughs> she comes over to our first class cabin and swings the door open with that like liberal arts confidence, just. <laughs> This shit is over. You're done. You're done. Stand up right now. You, you stand up. Stand, how, how, you're done. Stand up. And Big Igor looks at me confused, then smiles, takes a big sip of vodka, spits it in her eyes and goes, no one talks to the machine like that. <laughs> Shuts the door in her face and goes, fuck that bitch, this is Russia. Huh. Don't worry, machine, when it gets dark, we have a good time. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing when it gets dark? Reaches into his pocket, pulls out a ring of keys, and he goes, we're robbing the whole fucking train. I'm a good person. I don't cheat, I don't cheat, this is why, let me tell you, I don't cheat on my wife. I don't cheat on my wife because one morning our whole family was in bed, the dogs, the cats, the girls, my wife, and we were just giggling and it was pure, it was perfect. And I, don't, I thought to myself, I don't ever want to screw this up. This is the most important thing. This is what it's, life's about. And they got up to make chop, chocolate chip pancakes and I laid in bed and I said, I will never cheat on my wife. I had a conversation with myself. I said, if I ever get into a situation where a hot girl's flirting with me, or I think she's flirting with me, and it seems like it could go further, I'm just gonna cock block myself. I'm just gonna look her in the face in front of everyone and go, I don't cheat on my wife! <laughs> now, I may be wrong. She may not be hitting on me. <laughs> she may throw a drink in my face, slap me, or I may be right. I, none of that matters to me. What matters to me is that I don't cheat on my wife because I've already had that conversation. Here's the problem. I never had that conversation about robbing trains. 
So when presented the opportunity, I thought I'd be like, not me, I'm going to go back and work on my verbs. <laughs> but apparently, when presented the opportunity, I'm the guy that's like, fuck it, let's start with my class. <laughs> so we robbed them first, while they slept, if that makes it better, and then we robbed the whole train. And if there's any consolation, we robbed me too, my bag was with them. And then we drank all night long, all night long, like literally until six in the morning, top five drunkest I've ever been without throwing up in my entire life. We pull into Moscow at 6 a.m., I'm pissed drunk. You ever been so drunk, you're like, I know I got a piss, but I can't find my dick. <laughs> Train stops, sun's up, I'm hammered, door opens, same teacher, not mad. Curious, right? She looks me in the eyes, smiling, and goes, I want to be the one to tell you they've alerted the police. And I look out, and on the platform, my whole class is standing there with a cop, talking. They're upset. They've been robbed. I get it. <laughs> Apparently, they've never heard snitches get stitches. <laughs> Big Igor sees this, and it's completely unfazed. He's like, don't worry. I talked to police for both of us. I was like, oh, thank God. He cracks a bottle of vodka. I'm like, well, I wouldn't bring that out to an officer, maybe. Lights a cigarette, walks out to the cop, who's taking a statement. The cop is taking a statement. Igor walks up behind him, grabs him by the arm, spins him around and goes, fuck you. We fuck you in the mouth. We fuck you in the ass. We, I'm like, stop with the fucking we shit. Now the cop is just staring at me and I hear him bark out, Pondum, sit down, sit down, which I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't sound like, you're okay, stay there. It is a come to Jesus moment where you know you fucked up. All I thought as I walked to the cop, who's standing in front of the class, I just robbed. Next to the gangster, I robbed them with, my only thought was, this isn't how I plan on spending my second junior year. <laughs> and the gulag taking hot dicks to the throat. I get five steps from the cop, who looks impatient as shit. He takes two big ass steps, grabs me by the arm, spins me away from my class, away from Igor, pulls me right into his face, and he goes, so. I understand you're the machine. <laughs> nice. Tonight you party with us. I was like, what? He's like, tonight you party with us, yes? And I looked at him and I was like, wait, I'm not in trouble? And he gets so close to me I can smell his morning cigarette and he goes, no. Fuck that bitch. This is Russia. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out tonight. From the bottom of my heart, this means the world to me. Thank you so much.